Hello everybody and welcome to another video. You guys seem to have been enjoying the longer form videos, so here's a slightly longer video about how I built an awesome banner for my Sanguinary Guard. Let's get stuck in. So the Blood Angels range refresh is truly upon us and the new Sanguinary Guard are out in force, but there's one thing that I don't really like about the miniatures, and it's not the lack of wings, though I will be adding wings to mine. It's the little banner, it doesn't look as glorious as it should, so I've nicked this one from Age of Sigmar, specifically from the Stormcast Eternals which share a lot of motifs with the Blood Angels. What I'm planning to do is cover up everything with a milliput in terms of all that detail because it's very Age of Sigmar and I want this to be 40k. There are a few little bits that I like about the banner, one of which is those big trailing scrolls at the end that make it look like something in full charge or in a stiff breeze, but with Sanguinary Guard being jump pack troops it's going to look absolutely perfect for increasing the range of motion of the models. Now it's important to note I'm not using the new Sanguinary Guard models here at the time of recording, they have not come out. I'm instead using the Horus Heresy Dawnbreakers models and you'll see one later when we attach everything together. Now as mentioned I want to cover up all of that Age of Sigmar specific detail so I'm going to be using Milliput which is a two part epoxy putty that dries fairly quickly. Now I'm not particularly experienced with sculpting and I know there are a few tips and tricks that I'm probably missing here but I decided to give it a go anyway and the only thing that I knew I really needed to do was cover my fingers and tools with Vaseline. This is so that I don't leave fingerprints and have the milliput stick to my hands as it's very adhesive to a lot of things. I broke the milliput ball that I'd created into a few small parts and spread it over the detail trying to keep it as true to the form of the flag as I possibly could. I found that with the Vaseline I could create quite smooth gradients between the different areas of milliput that I'm sticking down. You can see I'm ripping bits off and reattaching it here and there and I'm generally using my fingers to make sure that it follows the form of the existing banner while still covering up that existing detail. All told doing both sides of the banner took about 15 minutes of sculpting time and then I left things to dry. It takes quite a bit of time, possibly due to my inexperience, but also because it's quite a large area to cover and I wanted to make sure it was smooth. One thing where I made a slight mistake is I thought that after it was dry I could probably sand this down, but the properties of milliput, at least in my experience and this case, meant that chunks would start falling off if I tried to do that, especially if I started trying to shave things down with a scalpel. Might just be, again, my inexperience, but I didn't have a good experience with that, so what you see at the end of the sculpting is basically what I ended up with. It's worth noting at this stage that I have a friend who's an absolute legend at sculpting, and I really should have used him more. He usually uses green stuff and says that's amazing, but asking for feedback at the end of the process, he said it looked good and it was fine, so that's high praise from him. I do want to quickly take this moment to shout out his Instagram, it's Stranger Knocking Hobbies. Please go and have a look, he does some amazing sculpting, some of which he's given to me in the past, including a Khan on bike that I painted up on this channel quite some time ago, links in the top right. As I started to approach the end of the sculpting phase, working on the back and making sure that the front didn't get too many fingerprints on it, I cracked out my scalpel and made sure to cut some smooth straight lines down the sides where the milliput had gone over the edges slightly. Ultimately, this is a really simple process, you just have to be patient because all the detail is already there, we just want to obscure that raised detail that says about Sigmar and stuff because who's he really? Just kidding, nobody get too mad at me, I like Age of Sigmar. Haven't played the game but I really like the models and I've read quite a few of the books, very enjoyable. Do you think it'd be good if we had the, like, the death people like Nagash and that in 40k? Thoughts below. We definitely need Skaven and Lizardmen in 40k, that would be cool. All right, let's move away from the sculpting because we've been staring at me mashing putty into a flag for a very long time and let's get on to a small amount of kit bashing. After everything had dried, I broke out the brand new Blood Angels upgrade sprue that I'm lucky enough to have thanks to Winter's SEO. On the sprue, there are these big winged blood drops that are meant to be stuck to things like vehicles and dreadnoughts and add a bit more detail, but I thought as they're flat backed, if I cut out two and stuck them back to back, I'd have an awesome winged blood drop for the top of my banner. I'm thinking of this as my chapter standard, even though technically an ancient would carry that because the Sanguinary Guard are the real heroes of the chapter and they come along only when Dante or a very experienced captain is about, so they would of course bring the huge banner with them. 
With that in mind, I wanted to put as much Blood Angel detail as I could on here without obscuring a bunch of freehand I'm going to do later. So I started by cutting off the Stormcast looking head or icon on top and then glued my winged blood drop in place. I left this to dry standing up so the blood drop wouldn't fall off at a weird angle but you won't see it in this video throughout the process it came off once or twice i think i ended up resorting to super glue because the plastic cement just wasn't holding it on such a small join now it's on to decorating the banner itself and i wanted to add one piece of raised detail before getting into the painting and that was to use a blood drop that normally hangs from a space marine's belt also from the blood angels upgrade sprue I cut off the rings that would normally attach to the Space Marine's armor or belt and shaved down one side so it had a flat back that would stick nicely to my miller plated banner. Once we finished tidying this up and gluing it to the banner and prior to priming, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about the new Blood Angels releases. I personally really enjoy all of the new models they revealed. I understand a lot of people maybe aren't quite so happy with what they perceive to be a lack of flavour and that's understandable, but I really like it and I have to say, having played the Codex a few times, I'm really having a good time with the Blood Angels. I feel like they absolutely nailed the narrative flavour at this stage. The only slight miss that I can think of is those Sanguinary Guard models. I don't mind the poses, I don't mind the main armour, I just wish they had wings and a slightly larger banner, but we can fix that ourselves and that's what I'm going to do. Now onto the painting, which is where we'll start to see everything come together. I do find after kit bashing, once you've got that primer down, things look really good and unified and you can tell immediately if you've made any serious mistakes, you can then go back and fix and reprime. In this case, it was good enough to immediately start painting. I'm using Baal Red Contrast Paint, which is my favorite Blood Angels base coat paint out there these days. I used to go darker, but I like leaning into the really bright Blood Angels and the high pigment paints are perfect for this. With the red base coat down, I used black paint to paint these scrolls and immediately decided that I didn't like it. So I'm going to change that later. I thought black, red and gold on the one banner would look really good and I'm sure it would, but I wanted these to look like actual paper hanging off the back. Like most things in 40K, supremely impractical and would rip at the first moment. I did use this black paint, which is Black Legion Contrast paint, to paint all the areas that are going to be silver metal though, because metal paints cover black better than they cover white paints. Whilst those black paints were drying, I took the opportunity to paint some of the gold details, including the wing blood drop and the hand. My favourite paint for all the gold on my Blood Angels, and gold in general, is Dragon's Gold from Duncan Rhodes' Two Thin Coats range. Sticking with contrast paints because some of the recent ones are so amazing, I'm using Sigvald Burgundy on the grip here, which I think is a nice off red colour that still leans into that Blood Angels theme. Next up, I'm going to be using some silver paints from Vallejo, specifically Dark Aluminium, which is a common feature on this channel, to paint the hinges that attach the big banner itself to the pole. Once these are done, I'm also going to paint the main pole itself, those areas we'd base coated black previously. You could paint this gold, but I thought given that it's a gold model holding it, I wanted a little bit of differentiation here and there. Variety is the spice of life, and painting. Now as advertised, I'm going back and painting Steel Legion Drab to make these areas at the back look like paper. I don't really mind these Age of Sigmar looking runes. I could have tried to obscure them with Milliput, but I'm just not that deft with it at this stage and I didn't want to obscure all the detail that these add in their shape and form. So I decided to accept that they were there and generally it doesn't look too different, it's fine. Besides, everyone's in space, who says they're always writing in English? Or gothic, you know what I mean. Now we're onto the real meat and potatoes and the really fun part of painting a banner, which is the freehand and adding the detail. Initially, I'm going to draw a gold border all the way around using the edges of the flag as my guideline. I'm using the exact same gold I used to base coat the wing blood drop and the hand and everything will blend together nicely. I used a small brush and took my time going bit by bit, keeping my lines as smooth as possible. 
If I was to make any crazy mistakes at this stage, which luckily I didn't, my plan was to use the same base coat I'd use as my primer to cover up the area and then paint a little bit more bile red over the top and hopefully with those layers everything would blend back together. Now we've done a little bit of freehand, it's time to cheat and use transfers. This isn't cheating, the transfers are so good you might as well use them. I started by taking the Blood Angels vehicle transfer sheet, I think this is quite an old one but I have loads of them because I have so many Blood Angels, I took the massive winged blood drop from there and put it on the centre of the banner that's going to be facing the front of the model. This is the main view that most people will be looking at so I wanted this to have the chapter icon and a few bits of text around it. It's worth noting that during this decal stage I had no real idea of where I wanted everything to go and there was a bit of back and forth. Generally it's better if you plan this out and understand how the banner is going to look but I started by wanting this blood dripping grail in the top right and then have some walls of text below it but I decided that didn't look very good so I moved some text into the top left, ultimately that's not where it lived and I kept moving this around using Microsol and Microset to keep everything fluid and moving. Of course, if you are like me and you haven't planned ahead, it means it can be slightly painful to move things around after the fact, which we'll see in just a second. I also made quite liberal use of the Serastus Knight transfer sheet that comes in all those Style of Knights boxes. It's got some really cool icons on it, and I thought that these golden spears and skulls would suit the Blood Angels really nicely. Now, as mentioned, I hadn't planned this out very well, so I ended up having to move this bit of text into the bottom right. I decided I wanted the blood drop in the center and then four corners with detail that I could draw some filigree around. This took quite some time and might look quite painful, but I do promise it worked out just fine. Just learn from me, plan ahead. The main thing you can do here is try and use your fingers because things will stick to them but don't go too rough because you'd end up ripping the transfer and use small amounts of microsol which is a decal remover as well as softener just to get the brush underneath and pull it away. After I'd got it off the banner I flattened it again against my finger and then used an upraised corner to peel it back off my hand and put it back where I wanted it on the banner. Again you can avoid this by planning better and generally being better organised. Now onto the back of the banner for the time being, I took one of the text blocks from the front that we saw earlier and put it on the back instead because I thought it would look better in the top left corner. I then took a massive winged skull with an iron halo from the Silver Templars set which I think came in one of those Warhammer Conquest magazines or Imperium magazine, forget which one, but it's a really cool transfer sheet and it has this big guy which is pretty non-specific to a chapter. We don't often think about the reverse of Space Marine banners because they're often hanging down from a pole, but this big one that's billowing out behind needed two sides of detail, much like the Astra Militarum ones do. Whilst applying all these transfers in the exact place I wanted them did take quite some time, it was far quicker and far less prone to disaster than if I tried to freehand absolutely everything. I have freehanded an entire banner before and it was great fun, but it was also only one side because it was one of those old Space Marine banners. That video is linked in the top right if you want to see me struggle with an eagle for several hours. After everything was where I wanted it to be, I made sure to add a nice layer of some contrast medium, which is just paint without pigment, over the top. I will also take this outside and varnish it before attaching it to the rest of the model later. I added some white to the blood drops so I can add some bile red later, and then started highlighting these big pieces of parchment out the back with Zandri dust followed by Yushabti bone. I had a few highlights here and there, some quick ones of pink horror on top of the burgundy areas that we painted earlier, and then added a bunch of shades to the other areas. Specifically, null oil over the metal areas, a bit of Reichland flesh shade over the gold, and then a few targeted areas of seraphim sepia to make this parchment on top look a bit more aged. 
Now with the main detail added to the banner and everything painted and highlighted up to the standard I'd like, it's time to go in and add a little bit more freehand using our gold paint from earlier. Using the same small brush, I started adding little bits of filigree here and there to block in these corner transfers and tie everything together. When I was doing this, I had in my mind thoughts of medieval filigree that you see on those giant banners from the Middle Ages, the kind that you'd see quite faded in a museum somewhere or in classic artwork, things like that. And generally, I just kind of took that as inspiration and went my own way with it. The main thing for me on this front facing side was to have everything as symmetrical as possible. If you have one side that looks too heavy of detail and the other side hasn't got enough, it's going to look slightly strange to the human eye. We like symmetry, so everything I did in the top right, I did in the bottom left, and everything I did on the full left, I also did on the full right. Does that make sense? Symmetry. It's a thing. Rather than just making gold boxes for these transfers to sit in, I added a little bit of curvature to the end just to make it look like it had been brushed on with gold leaf or something in a nice pattern. And then I added a few more curves after the fact further down. The end result should look mildly complex to anyone who's looking at it for the first time, but as I've broken it down into simple stages, do a straight line, do a curve, then add another curve later on, make sure it's symmetrical. It didn't actually take that long and the overall effect is more than the effort I put in, I think. I also then wanted to have a giant gold circle around the winged blood drop, so I marked off a few areas in a rough circle using dots and then joined those dots up. I find whilst not perfect, this is the best way to paint a circle and you can use more dots if you're not feeling like joining up big stretches of space between them. Basically, the more dots you add in the right place, the easier it is to join everything up, but I find I can go a bit wild with the dots and it ends up being a very wonky circle. So I like to leave a little bit to the imagination and then I can join it and it looks pretty good for a hand-drawn circle, I think. On the back side of the banner, I added more filigree with some random shapes using similar curves to those that I'd used on the front. Finally, I took the brightest gold paint I have, which is Vallejo's gold, and added some text between a few areas on the front and back of the banner. Now, I already have a Dawnbreaker squad that I use a Sanguinary Guard painted in their scheme. Dawnbreakers, as mentioned earlier, are a Blood Angels model from Horus Heresy. So I added this extra one I had and made sure he was going to be my sixth member, as Sanguinary Guard now come in threes and sixes instead of fives and tens. Now the banner's quite large and this model's quite small, so I wanted to pin everything together to make sure it wouldn't fall or snap at an inopportune moment. There's no opportune moment for models breaking, but you never know, on transit when I don't have super glue handy because I've forgotten it again. Things like that. To pin, I used my pin vise, which is electric because I'm lazy, and I used it to make little holes in both the hand and the wrist of the model and the banner. I then used a small piece of paper clip that I cut to size to put into the hand and then using super glue because the model is resin and the flag is plastic so they're not going to glue together with plastic cement, I attached everything together. It is worth noting I have spray varnished everything before attaching everything together so there's not too much risk of things rubbing off so I could be a little bit more forceful pushing everything together and as I did I made sure to bend the rod in the arm ever so slightly to make sure the banner was at the angle I wanted it to be. I then used a tiny bit of super glue activator just to be 100% sure that nothing was going to fall off instantly while I waited for everything to dry normally. The final thing to do was paint up the base off camera, we can do a video on that another time if you like. I had a really good time painting this, I'm loving Blood Angels at the moment and I hope you enjoyed it too. As always I've been Sam, see you next time.